Thanks for joining us, Dr. Chiba, from the Department of Chemistry and Chemical Biology. How's your uh, start to the online term going so far? Incredibly busy. Uh, <laughs> I, I never imagined like how much work online teaching is. You know, I, I, I did have a sense at the beginning that, hey, this won't be much harder. You know, it's, it'll be the same thing. It's just the same schedule. You're just teaching in front of a screen instead of uh, in front of a lecture hall. But um, there is a little bit of a learning curve to it that I've found has taken up a bit of my time. Um, it's been about two weeks. And I think I'm finally getting used to Microsoft <laughs> Teams and all the other platforms. And, you know, uh, I've had a real good lesson at like what permissions means on the online world. <laughs> But uh, it's definitely been a bit of a learning curve, but I think I'm getting the hang of it now. Definitely what you said about Teams there, that's, that's the biggest thing from a student is uh, all the different platforms that we're now using. We've gone yeah. from just using Avenue to we've got Avenue and Teams and Echo360 and all the others. So it's, mm -hmm. it's definitely a, a big adjustment um, going to using all those platforms now. Oh, for sure. I was just going to ask, um, what's your favorite part about working from home? So like silver lining. I mean, one part is there's no commute to the university, which is fine, you know. I have about a 20, 30 minute commute, which I haven't had to do, so that saves some time. I'm sure I'm gonna be a little happier about that once winter hits. I can make my own schedule a little more. Um, so for whatever reason, if in the middle of the afternoon, I decide I need to go do some grocery shopping, I just slip out and do it. You know, if I have a spare moment, I can grab coffee whenever I want. I don't have to pay for it. I just pull it out <laughs> of the coffee machine. That's um, a big I plus. Eat, yeah, I can eat whatever I want when I want. You know, every once in a while, I'll decide I'm gonna take a, an hour for lunch and just cook myself a giant meal for lunch. So there's you know, little perks here and there that uh, come from working at home that you wouldn't necessarily get working in the office. I think, like you said, having the little bit of idle time in between that's actually useful now, that's definitely a big thing. You're not yeah. just kind of waiting around on campus for your next event to happen. You can actually use that time. Yeah, yeah, I find that a little more, for, exactly, for sure, exactly that. You know, instead of just twiddling my thumbs in my office trying to kill an hour sometimes, uh, you know, yeah. reading something on the internet. Me personally, during lectures, I get really snacky. And with the refrigerator being so close, it's becoming an issue. Do you have a favorite snack? <laughs> well, um, well, I always have a coffee beside me. Like I, I go through about probably three coffees a day now, which is a little bit excessive. <laughs> um, I mean, uh, what's my favorite snack now? I mean, my all-time favorite snack are uh, Reese's Peanut Butter Cups. Um, so I'll go to the dollar store and buy those 10 packs for $2, and I'll buy like 10 of those 10 packs, it's, it's dangerous. Uh, <laughs> That's a lot of peanut butter cups. <laughs> <laughs> You'd be surprised how many I go through. I'm really trying to cut back now. But nobody people. eats just one of the like mini packs. You eat like the whole You eat whatever's thing. in front of you. Oh, yeah. I know, exactly. Yeah. I, I, I have to completely remove it from my office. They are you know, downstairs in the drawer. <laughs> you know, I gotta make a lot of effort just to get to it. So I'm trying to dissuade myself. Uh, so I gotta unlock that. Um, yeah, that's like my crutch. But um, you know, I'm trying to be a little more healthy. Green grapes right now. My favorite. So I'm trying to make an effort of just putting grapes on the table. And so if I'm ever <laughs> snacky, there's a grape there I can just grab. Um, eh, coffee, grapes, peanut butter cups. Those are the ones right now. But it, it changes. It changes. It changes month to month. <laughs> um, so we touched on this a little bit, but what is other than um, trying to be healthy and avoiding snacking 24 seven? What mm -hmm. is one of the biggest challenges of working from home? Um, I, so this may apply to the students as well, and I, this is my biggest issue. Part of it is just staying focused. So when I'm at work, you know, I'm in my office, or I'm on, on campus, you know, I'm, sometimes you get bored, you have to work, because that's all you have to do there. At home, you know, it's really easy for me to work on something and just decide, you know what, I'm going to go lie on the couch for a bit, or I'm going to go have a coffee and then have a nap for half an hour. Um, also what I call a nappuccino. <laughs> or an <espresso. laughs> have, a have a coffee and then it's immediately sleep for half an hour. Um, it's very easy to get distracted. And especially if I'm just really like doing something cumbersome, like editing closed captions or, you know, one aspect of online teaching, I'm just, you know, I enjoy a little less, you know, it's very easy to just be like, you know, I need to do grocery shopping or I need to take a nap or, you know what, the windows suddenly look really dirty. I need to clean those. So staying focused has yeah. been the hardest part. So I really been trying to just make sure, you know, once I sit down on my computer, um, I force myself to work for at least an hour and then I take my 10, 15 minute break and then I come back and do hours of work. So I really try to force myself to just focus for an hour, work, and then I allow myself to get a little distracted for a few minutes and then back to work. Um, and I think, and I think the problem is it's just working at home. You just have a sense of there's so much around me. There's more you can do. Um, it, there is a feel like this isn't work. This is home. 
Um, so you're trying to fight that in your head the entire time. Um, so a lot of it I find is just, you know, coming up with a process to keep yourself focused and sort of, I, I like to just list things down as tasks. I, I find one of the challenges too is, um, you know, sometimes a task seems insurmountable because you just have so much to do or there's just this huge goal you have to get to. And the more insurmountable a task is, the less likely you are to start it. So I like to break everything down to smaller pieces. So I have a sheet of paper with about every small tiny task I need to do. Um, just so I, you know, more likely to, hey, you know what, I have this huge project I have to do, but, you know, I really want to just do these five small tasks and cross them off. That's good advice. Yeah. So that's why I do this, stay focused. <laughs> but uh, I know, you know, even on the professor end, we all go through it too. Um, there has been a day or two, you know, in the past few months where I've just decided, you know, I give up today, I'm just going to sleep. You know? <laughs> I try not to make it more than a day, you know. It does Some, happen. Sometimes you need that. Yeah. 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 I definitely find the staying focused, the challenges during a normal school year, you lose focus, you change your location. You go to a library, you go to a lecture hall, you go to a whatever it is, or your mm -hmm. day's more broken up because you're moving around all day. Yeah. And being home, it's, well, you've lost your focus. Well, where are you going to go? You're already home. <laughs> There's nowhere else to go. Um, For sure. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. No, that's, that's a big challenge. And, and even during a, even when you have scheduled classes, it's a little more normal because your day is just kind of programmed. Like, hey, I have a class at one, I have a class at four, so there's a two hour break in between. That's my study. Or that's yeah. when I get lunch and then sit down on a bench and, you know, you have dedicated time slots even for studying during a normal time that you may not have with uh, the online classes. Yeah, for sure. And I think it's important to still find ways to utilize that time, right? Mm -hmm. it's not um like you said it's not go lay down on the couch for an hour or something it's trying to remember <laughs> that this would normally be your study time and uh, sure exactly it yes. still can be right it's hard to do that when your bed is right right here yeah right there. <laughs> yeah and, uh, you know even right my bedroom's so close it's just <laughs> yeah. when your bedroom comes with you to office hours <laughs> <laughs> yes <laughs> yeah <laughs> with the uh online lectures and everything there's a bit of a dress code change. I mean, you don't necessarily need to dress the same you would. Mm -hmm. uh, do you wear pants during your lectures? So I will tell you right now, <laughs> kind of a secret, but it's not actually going to be a secret. I'm telling you right now. Um, and now that online has been announced for the winter, I can guarantee <laughs> you, I will be wearing shorts the entire school year. Guarantee. <laughs> okay. No matter how good I look on the screen, whether I'm like well shaven or scruffy. <laughs> You know, just randomly threw on a suit jacket over a scrubby t shirt. Like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> shorts. <laughs> Khaki shirts, I'm going the entire year. That is perfect. <laughs> One no one's favorite. the wiser until you go and tell everyone on a uh, Max Time Minutes video. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, I have no shit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's funny. Mm -hmm. All right. But that's what we're here for. We're here to get the insider knowledge. <laughs> this is what the people want to know. Yeah, you know what? If and it, this is just it's it's not that I'm doing it intentionally. Whenever I'm at home, I always wear shorts. It's, even <laughs> yeah. if over the middle of winter, I come home. First thing I do is put on shorts. So now that I'm at home, I just keep the shorts on. Um, speaking of what the people want to know, would you please introduce us to your cat? Oh, the cat. Okay. Yeah, everyone likes to see the cat. Let me see if I can uh, enter. I got bag of temptations. Very healthy. You shall come down here. And Tina I, also likes this. I also have a yeah. whistle that she knows to know that treats are coming. Just one sec. I have her attention. I'm going to pull out a few treats. <laughs> we, have, we have the star of the show Aww. with us today, guys. What's their name? Her name is Roxy. She is nine and a half years old. She's trying to Aww. reach at the treats I left her. She's <laughs> Um, she is a indoor outdoor cat. She gets about two hours outdoor a day. Um, and she yeah, hangs out with me. I think she's been a little more annoyed recently that I've been working at home. She used to get her eight hours of eight hours of peace and now she gets annoyed. But, um, yeah, she is my roommate. <laughs> so I'm going to let her go. I'll let her just sit. <laughs> She'll be here as long as it takes her. Yes. Thanks for introducing her. You can <laughs> stay as long as she wants. We had, we had someone ask, does mm -hmm. the cat have social media? Yes, and can they follow? 
So unfortunately, she doesn't have social media, but she shows up in my social media quite a bit. That's day. perfect. So, what is your social media? Uh, let's see. I do have an Instagram, uh, Mr. Underscore Chiba. I know a lot of you. <laughs> no, this is perfect. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Underscore Chiba. I, a lot of students follow me on Instagram. I noticed in the past year, too. got pretty popular. Um, so <laughs> anyone's welcome to follow me. Um, the only thing I ask is don't DM me on the Instagram because I'm <laughs> That's a good idea. <laughs> All the you rocks hold, hands. Just if you need to get a hold of me, you have my email. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> there's, there's plenty of other options. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's my don't send your profit DM. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's good advice. Um, there is also a question about, do you think that Roxy's happy that you're home all the time now? Oh, uh, yes and no. <laughs> yes and no. I think she's like quietly annoyed a little bit. Uh, <laughs> happy to have me around and she gets the treats, but also there's periods of times where she just decides, and we go like hide under the bed for like two hours because I just, <laughs> I'm just done with <laughs> dealing with people right now and dealing with you. So that's I relatable. Do, I, I feel she, that way sometimes. <laughs> I think she liked her eight hours of alone time back when I was working in the office. But yeah, it's tough to say. Um, <laughs> do you guys fight each other for nap spots now? Um, a little bit, a little <laughs> bit. Although, um, fortunately, she always sits on the top of a couch and not actually on the couch, so we don't fight for couch space. Um, but definitely bed space, we fight a little bit for it. <laughs> I did get her this, you know, <laughs> beautiful cat bed. Right. <laughs> which I gotta say, the entire summer she refused to use, and then, like five days ago, she decided I like my cat bed again. So that's kind of true. Yeah. Shortage of bed space. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I think they just like to be on their own schedule. They like to be unpredictable. <laughs> oh yeah, she, goes, she tends to go through like a three-month rotation where she switches her. Yeah. <laughs> I think that is all the questions we have. Yeah, that's all we had right now. Um, is there any other general advice you'd have for students this year? I think we covered almost everything there. Um, yeah, I think, um, I mean, this kind of goes with scheduling as well. All the courses are running things just a little differently. Um, some courses are synchronous, some are asynchronous, some are both, you know, and every course runs on a slightly different schedule and a slightly different pattern. And it does take a few weeks to acclimatize. But my advice for everyone is to try and stay on top of the material. Okay, try and keep up with the week-to-week -week lectures, even if it means, you know, at least if it's asynchronous content, even if it means just keeping up with that along the way. Um, and so at the very least, once you hit the um, high stress times, which is the test week and the exam week, at least you are, you know, sort of partly on top of things. Okay, I know, I know it's always really hard just to always be on top of everything 100% of the time, but... Yeah. You know, it's it's easy. I find it's much easier to fall behind in the online world. Um, and this it's is a lot to keep track of. It's a lot to stay on top of. And it is a lot. Yeah. Um, so even if it means just keeping a calendar and you know keeping track and dedicating certain hours a day to your work, um, that's what I would. So that's the advice I'd have to give. And you know, kind of think of it too. Like, hey, if I'd be spending you know four hours a day at school, then make sure you spend that amount of time, you know, on whatever you're doing in your own work, either watching pre-recorded lectures or practicing practice problems or whatever it takes for a given place. I was gonna say, Devin, you smiled a lot during that. Is there something that you're trying to hide? Are we? That I have no idea what's going on in my courses, no. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm still trying to figure it out too. <laughs> I, just, I just jump between platforms. I'm like, okay, Teams, Avenue, Echo. It's like, there's stuff everywhere and I have no idea where anything is, and, but I'm getting there. Each day is yeah. a little better. <laughs> you know, and I, from my point of view, too, I think Avenue is just always like, you have to have Avenue because that's your main point of contact. Yeah. And I, for me, Teams is the deliver, delivery of how I'm delivering my course. Um, and I'm trying to actually move away from Avenue, but I'm still sort of slightly dependent on it for certain things. For um, sure. There's, some, there's certain aspects of it that's maybe a little bit simpler than Teams, I find. Yeah. And so I find it, my, my choice too, it's like not all students see the Teams announcements, so I have to post the Avenue, and then not all students see the Avenue announcements. So I'm trying to recall, okay, remember to post about it. There's <laughs> a little bit of a challenge there. Well, thank you very much. Greatly well, appreciate it. Well, um, that was some awesome advice. Yeah, I'm no so sorry we interrupted her nap. <laughs> I should probably open the door for her. <laughs> Let her escape. <laughs> and there. <laughs> Gone.
All right. Well, thank you for being with us today. Dr. Kim, you have a great talk that I highly recommend everyone look into and watch. Uh, it's called Achieving Academic Success with the Science of Learning. Um, we're going to link that in the description as well, because it has some great advice for taking advantage of study habits and uh, using psychology to benefit your academic success. Today, though, if you don't mind, we're just going to focus on what has changed with COVID and the online um, learning environment and how we kind of have to adapt to that new situation. One of those changes being learning from a screen rather than from online or rather than from in-person lectures and tutorials where you feel slightly more connected. A lot of people feel disconnected in this sense. Do you have any advice for how to feel like you're more connected and immersed in your learning despite the online format? Yeah, I think there's a lot of things going on. One of the things I think is that it's a novel situation. I think part of when you go to a lecture hall, there's an accountability that's built in. You have to be there at a certain time. Uh, you take the time to be there. Um, you're looking at others around you for social cues on how to behave. Are people paying attention? There's lots of things like that online that we might miss out on. One thing to do, I think, is to make sure that you have sort of the same preparation for an online lecture as you would if you went to class. And so um, if you're Don't always in your- roll over onto your pillow and pull up yeah. the lecture. <laughs> I think there's some students that do that. They're just still lying in bed in their pajamas and kind of feeling sleepy while they're where, while they should be attending to the lecture, right? So I think the idea of like getting changed, getting ready, maybe even, it might sound silly, go for a walk around the block before you start your lecture. Sort of have like a bit of a commute built in. If you're constantly in your pajamas, I think it kind of makes you feel different. And if I'm like in pajamas and, and I've got my contacts off and I'm wearing glasses, I feel like I'm just ready to just relax. Lots of other challenges. You might, you know, a student might be living in a house with a lot of people, a lot of distractions going on. Um, you know, or one thing that's their family. Yeah, their family. <laughs> uh, so I have that too. Uh, you know, it's, I have an evening lecture I have to give and my daughter might want to come in, just, you know, interrupt me. And so try to create a productive workspace where, um, and it might be just part of your room that you really have dedicated to, this is where I will work, as opposed to lying on your bed uh, and typing. Like, I, I really recommend that you separate these uh, things. Like, even in your, if you just have one room to call your own, um, your bed, ideally don't make that, a place where you work it'll help you fall asleep faster too because then when you hit the bed otherwise you associate your bed with work and um, it's hard to relax and fall asleep at night because this is what the uh, a context that you associated with working and potential anxiety thinking through all these processes when it's time to work work when it's time to relax and restore make that a priority as well. That's great advice. And I think that kind of leads into what Tina was going to ask next. Yeah. So we sort of touched on this a little bit, but um, a lot of students this term are struggling with their new environment and physical space. So for example, a lot of students are finding themselves stuck in their bedroom all day, studying, eating, sleeping. There's not really any where to go, um, especially in student houses. Um, so you're sort of confined all in the same space. Do you have any advice to deal with this change specifically? Well, I think like part of um, you know, some research that my lab has done uh, is the important role of scheduled breaks. Instead of just going back to back to back, even if you have three online lectures in a row, um, if you can carve out you know, that 10 minutes between the lectures, um, don't just stay on your computer and start messaging or checking email or watching a video. Use that 10 minutes for a restorative break. And there are several different things you could do. You could go for a, a brisk walk. You could, a healthy snack, something that's not gonna give you a crash. Um, you could socialize. I mean, you could phone someone. You could uh, do something that's an actual break. 
Otherwise, um, you know, you could be sitting for several hours in one spot and it's really hard to stay focused and motivated uh, when you're not moving and you're just sitting. And research that my lab has done has demonstrated that um, exercise in particular is a really good thing to do. A good restorative break is that it's truly restorative in nature that uh, you're doing something to reset your attention, your motivation, and your energy levels. So kind of taking an effort almost in these breaks, rather than it being purely just about um, ending your lecture and thinking about nothing, taking an effort to turn it into something. Well, yeah. I mean, I think you could also do nothing, but you don't have to sit there on your computer. You could just lie down for a moment and uh, meditate. <laughs> for five minutes. That's something that I started doing a few years ago and I find it to be very restorative. At first, I was pretty skeptical. I thought, oh, why do people meditate? Like, I don't get this, what, what is going on? But I just kind of stuck to it and now it's something I really look forward to in the afternoon. Interesting. Um, I'm kind of throwing a curveball at Tina here. She wasn't expecting me to ask this question. But Perfect. I just thought of. Um, Right now, in, a, in more ways than one, not only um, in terms of school and we're missing this transition between lectures where you'd normally be walking between buildings. Now we're sitting at our laptop just kind of staring at a screen. Um, in more ways than one, we're kind of in a period of waiting and everything seems like we're waiting on something. We're waiting on our next lecture to start. We're waiting on things to improve in the world around us. We're waiting on everything. We're waiting on school to reopen. Um, do you have any advice on like dealing with this state of waiting or better capitalizing on this time rather than just feeling like we're always waiting on something? Yeah, that's a really good question. And I think that connects to meditation because um, meditation really helps you to focus on like this moment. So for me, uh, the experience going through the pandemic, um, it's been largely positive. Of course, there's lots of challenges, but um, I, I avoided getting stuck into this situation where I think, well, I'm just waiting for everything to be better. Right now, what can I be doing? And so many different things. So uh, my daughter, obviously, like we went moved to online homeschool. And for me, this was amazing because I got to spend so much more time with her during the day than I normally would have. And uh, we did some amazing things. We did some amazing projects, uh, uh, videos that we made together. And so um, right now you have a lot of extra time. I mean, that's a really valuable resource that you normally are short of. I think the best thing that you can do is um, think about what you could do now and make a plan. And, you know, one of the things I really advocate that I talk about in that, uh, the lecture that you, um, reference is, uh, scheduling things in having like a actual plan every day. I have a pretty set routine, uh, in the morning. So the first thing I do is I meditate for just five minutes. I, I just listen to a meditation track for five minutes before I even get out of bed. Then I will um, uh, journal for uh, about 10 minutes. And uh, I'd be happy to share with you. <laughs> uh, I have some question prompts that I use to help get me started. Uh, so basically, I'm just answering these questions. And one of the questions is, what's on your mind right now? And I'll just write stream of consciousness, things that are on my mind. And it's kind of like acting as your own psychologist um, because you can see interesting patterns emerge. At the end of the week on Sunday, I set aside half an hour just to read through my journal entries from the past week. And you could observe interesting things like, oh, wow, like, you know, these days I didn't get that much sleep. And the next day it looked like it affected my mood and my productivity. And then you could use that information to make adjustments. And so one of the things I actually adjusted based on this understanding was um, a better routine of going to bed at night and making sure, what the advice I gave you, that I'm not doing work in my bed. And then I will do 30 minutes of exercise. I use this app called Streaks Workout, which I love because it gives you variety uh, and it just tells you what to do. 
So it'll say like do 10 push-ups, do 15 sit-ups, do 12 jumping jacks. Uh, and then you, you just check them off. And then right after that, I will uh, look at my calendar and I will set my to-do list for that given day. And all the major tasks I have to do, I will actually book an appointment right into my calendar. So I know exactly what I'm going to do uh, uh, on it during that day. I don't follow this 100%. I would say like 80%. Just following my plan for the day because things come up, life happens. Uh, 80% of the way really pushes me forward in getting the things I want uh, completed. I guess that's the same as in normal I don't want to call it normal life. This is our normal life right now. But <laughs> when we're not in COVID era, I mean, you can have a schedule for your day and you have your classes planned and everything. But yeah. Run into I'm, on campus and it changes your plans or something happens yeah. in one of your lectures and it changes your plans. So it's good to have a plan, but not necessarily worry too much about being 100% strict to it, I guess. Yeah, I think it's the same thing like with like your diet and nutrition. I think having a general game plan makes sense that you follow, let's say 80% of the time. But I mean, you know, we're only human. And so sometimes they're going to indulge and have treats. But if you follow it 80% of the time, you're probably going to be okay. And technology has turned into such a big part of our lives now. But it also gives us some opportunities. And I thought of one for you. Have you considered turning your camera off during your lectures and letting your daughter Monica teach the lectures? <laughs> um, I think it would be, um, I think it's actually a really interesting time right now because all the professors are lecturing from home. And so um, I think you get a bit of a glimpse into their lives at home. So during my lecture, sometimes, um, uh, you know, my dog or my daughter uh, interrupts. And um, I think students love things like that. Seeing the actual, like, you know, human side, um, not seeing things completely polished. And, you know, just, I think it makes uh, professors more relatable, like, wow, you know, they can't control their dog from <laughs> coming or, or these things, or even if the internet goes out, uh, that like, oh, wow, it happens to them as well, right? So one of the things I've, I've kind of observed is that I think people are a lot more um, um, generous and understanding of various different things that are happening right now. And so uh, having allowances for things that <laughs> someone just walked by your window. <laughs> right? Wow, you're Devin, you're just like a regular human being. Yeah, I'm just like the rest of you guys. Yeah, <laughs> you're not the like superhuman I pretend to be. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I, noticed, I noticed there was a dog in the background when we started. Yeah, this is my dog here. Uh, <laughs> what? What is Aww. on you? Aw. There's something on her. Okay, so <laughs> a leaf of some sort. <laughs> and um yeah like, like last lecture i was playing this song uh that summarized classical conditioning and then cherry was just sitting on my lap and then she just kind of started dancing uh to the song and yeah i think things like that are kind of cool for sure no one's ever going to be upset when a dog makes an appearance true yeah <laughs> um you talked a little bit or well, actually we talked a bit about scheduling and its importance. What does a well set up schedule look like? You gave us an example sort of of like your morning. What about yeah. structuring like classes in terms of work and break time? There's a lot more freedom in schedules right now too yeah. with yeah. lectures being um, a lot of them aren't necessarily scheduled times. So students have the opportunity to <laughs> take them whenever they'd like, whether that be spread out or regularly scheduled or the night before their test. <laughs> Yeah, I think um, when you have um, things like online resources that you can do anytime, that gives you great flexibility, but it can also be dangerous if you don't actually schedule things. So in my course, uh, students have web modules that they have to go through, and I tell them, um, make sure you actually schedule into your calendar. There's flexibility, but you should actually schedule into your calendar this, you know, uh, Thursdays at four o'clock, that's when I'm going to watch uh, the web module. Otherwise, if you have completely unstructured days, uh, it's easy for nothing to get done. And you know what? Every once in a while, that's probably okay. If, you, if you're feeling burnt out and you really need a break, 
but that can't be the norm. The norm should be that when you look at your schedule for the day, you know when your classes are, you know what you're going to be doing in between classes at specific times. Um, it's also important to make sure that you don't overbook yourself uh, for the day um, and you're realistic with your goals. So a task that you schedule yourself for um, this day between 2 to 4 p.m. cannot be finally catch up on all of biology. <laughs> That's not a realistic goal. But to, well, I'll have to make a change to my plans then. Good. <laughs> <laughs> to read chapter three, I think that is a reasonable goal to get done. Because at the end of the day, the other thing that you should do is spend a few minutes reviewing how did this day go? If you carve out manageable goals per day, uh, at the end of the day, you've got them checked off. There's no, nothing more for you to do. Now it's just time for you to restore and regenerate for the next day. And you could do so guilt-free. Otherwise, you know, I meet a lot of students where even when they're doing something really fun and enjoyable, uh, they're thinking to themselves, the look on their face is like, wow, I really shouldn't be here. I shouldn't be doing this. I shouldn't be enjoying this meal. I shouldn't be enjoying this uh, movie that I'm watching. And you could feel like that for four years. And <laughs> that is not a healthy way to live. And so by making plans like this that are reasonable per day, um, you really set yourself up for success, I think. One other thing, we've heard this from quite a few people. With the change to online, um, students are finding it more difficult to network with profs, they find. Do you have any advice for students that are interested in looking for um, research positions or ways to volunteer or ways to interact with their professors more? Well, uh, um, you know, I think professors um, have office hours. So, so I, I have office hours and I have a drop-in office hour where as many students as they want could pop in uh, and students could ask questions or just listen but I also have uh, appointments that people can set up for one-on-one -on -one meetings and um, you know I have a lot of students come by uh, virtually uh, every week so I've had a chance to meet a lot of students asking questions so I think you can still virtually network and interact with students and Student societies uh, are still having online events and you know, professors are invited to give presentations to them. Um, I'm giving a presentation today um, at 3.30 in our, our, our second year uh, program for the students. So I think there still are creative uh, virtual opportunities for networking. So I believe this is our last question. Mm -hmm. Yes. So. And the most important question, is did you also get into baking during quarantine? Do you have any recipes that you would like to pass along or any uh, other hobbies? Let's see. Um, I don't bake that much. My brother is a baker. And so he actually bakes a lot of things and freezes them. And then uh, I, you know, <laughs> I take these products. Um, but I'm into cooking in general. I like, I like cooking more than baking. Because I think baking is more of a, an exact science, whereas cooking is more of an art. And I like to kind of just, you know, improvise and just see what I have and then um, uh, start cooking uh, with flavors. I think that'll go well together. So, um, yeah, I, I, I don't always I don't typically follow a recipe. Uh, I have like a few different things that I like to make and then based on whatever ingredients I have. I let that dictate. Yo, I always want let the let the ingredients shine. <laughs> <laughs> all right, I believe that's all of our questions. Devin, do you have another curveball? Nope, I, <laughs> I believe that's all. Thank you very much. That was yes. some amazing advice. And um, again, I'd highly suggest that everyone checks out that talk that you have. We're going to link it in the description as well. But the uh, science of learning and achieving academic success. Thank you. Yeah you go into similar topics in that, in that lecture, um, maybe in a little bit more detail. But yeah, that was some great advice and thank you for the time and thank Thanks you for having. introducing us to your dog. Yes. The highlight of the, of the interview. <laughs>